Why? 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 Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. Today I'm going to show you a prototype of a Y carriage build that I designed back in 2012. I have no idea whether it's going to work or not, but it's been sitting there for quite a while and gnawing away at me uh, as to whether it will actually work. So the best thing I thought was build it and we'll find out. Now when I designed this, I designed it to be as simple to build as possible with no special tools required. In my case, I pretty much built all of it using a drill press. I needed to use a mechanical hacksaw to cut my steel to length, but equally I could have got my steel supplier to do that for me. Everything else was done on the drill press, and it is really simple to do. It's also built in a lot of adjustability. That means it will pretty much fit any V-Rail setup with a rack on it. Let's have a look at how it's built and you'll see what I mean. So here are all the parts and tools required to assemble the new carriage. I'm starting by assembling the six modules that make up the carriage. The first one is very simple. It's nothing more than a bolt, two nuts and a washer. I'll put aside each piece when I finish it and when I have all six parts constructed I'll then assemble it onto the aluminium extrusion. This piece is made from angle iron and forms part of the support mechanism for the top bearing rail. So this part is the adjustment block for the bottom V-bearing rail. It will allow fine tuning of the bottom V-bearing to give correct tension. The bottom V-bearing rail has only a single V-bearing installed on it. It mounts to the rail using a 3 8 bolt and a drilled out nut which is used as a spacer. It threads directly into the rail. Two additional bolts are added and these will be used to attach it to the aluminium extrusion. The next part we have is the rack and pinion drive mount adjustment cam. It carries out two important functions. First it is a spacer block for the rack and pinion drive. The rack and pinion drive needs to be spaced correctly so that it engages as much of the rack as it can without running into the extrusion wall. This is designed so that it's adjustable. There are three bolts which you can use to adjust how thick the cam actually is. Here I'm adjusting it to 22.6 millimeters. I screw in each bolt, check it, tighten it, and then check it again to make sure it's correct. The second function of the adjustment cam is it allows you to adjust the attack angle of the rack and pinion drive with respect to the carriage. Ideally, I want mine at 45 degrees. The last piece we need to assemble is the top V-bearing rail. This one has two V-bearings on it. The first one attaches the same as it did on the bottom rail, with a 3 8 bolt and a spacer nut. Next we put on the four mounting bolts that will attach it to the aluminium extrusion. The next piece to go on is the rack and pinion drive mount adjustment cam. 
it simply bolts up through the plate again with a 3 8 bolt. You can see here how the three bolts hold the plate off the top rail, giving the spacing that's required. The next bit I'm putting on is the spring that holds the rear of the rack and pinion drive. It'll be used to support the back of the drive unit. With our six components complete, we're now ready to assemble them to the aluminium extrusion. The first piece to go on is the small nut and bolt arrangement. It simply bolts up to the extrusion and provides a stop for the V-bearing bottom adjuster plate. The adjuster plate now slides into place and the bolts are just lightly tightened up. They don't need to be tight at this plate point. The plate is allowed to move about. Next I'm putting in the adjuster block for the bottom V-bearing rail. It goes in and bolts down tightly to the extrusion. You'll notice I have pencil marks on the aluminium extrusion giving a rough indication of where these parts are to go. There's nothing overly critical because the whole design is so adjustable. Next I'm going to put in the top V-bearing rail. Again it simply slides down and in hindsight maybe I should have left that long bolt off as it's a bit of a nuisance at the moment and can be put on at any time. It's important that this piece goes on square. When the rail was made everything was referenced off one side of the piece of steel and I'm using that side to square it up to the extrusion. I'm now just going to tighten the bolts down lightly so that it just holds in place. Next piece is the piece of angle iron which will attach to the top V-bearing rail and provide additional support to hold it in place. I'll be using the second V-bearing bolt to hold this together in place. I'm using a bolt with a drilled out nut Once everything's bolted together, I can now tighten up the bolts, both on the angle iron piece, and finally after checking that the top rail plate is square, I can then tighten down the holding bolts. It is critical that this piece be set up square. It's now time to attach it to the table. It simply hooks over the top V-rail and then using an Allen key I can undo the set screw at the bottom and then once the V-bearing is in an approximate location I can tighten it up. 
I need to tighten it up so that it just nicely rubs against the rail there and finally lock the bottom bolts in position. It should now run nicely along the rail. The next part to go in is the rack and pinion drive. It comes with a machined bolt and I've made a small three quarter of a millimetre spacer to go between them just to stop the two surfaces from rubbing together. The turn buckle is attached to the spring at the rear and then the bolt that attaches it is simply screwed in to the rack and pinion mount adjustment cam. The hole in the big green washer there is quite large and goes around the outside of the bushing on the rack and pinion drive. So I'm just making sure that when I do it up it's not going to end up pinched. It should still move freely even once the rack and pinion bolt is done up firmly. With that done, the turnbuckle can now be adjusted to engage the pinion with the rack. At this point in time, I'm not over tightening it. I just want it to nicely engage with it and no more. If it's too tight, I'm going to have problems with the next adjustment. The time has now come to adjust the angle of the rack and pinion. So I'm starting by undoing the bolt holding the drive mount cam in position. I can now rotate the cam and as you can see the angle at which the rack and pinion drive sits adjusts. If it's too steep or too shallow there's a possibility the pinion may jump out of the rack. So by having it at 45 degrees that's the best compromise where it shouldn't jump out while you're using it. I can put the square against the extrusion and you can see the angle is off but by rotating the cam the angle adjusts and now it's 45 degrees. I simply now need to retighten the bolt that secures the cam adjustment in place. And there we have it, our axis is assembled. Well now that you've seen it I'm hoping you now understand why I'm saying this will pretty much fit any V-Rail setup with a rack built onto it. It's because these here are so adjustable you can move them to suit any width of rack you like. Also the fact it's got this adjustment cam on it so you can change the attack angle of the rack and pinion drive just makes it so adjustable. Now don't expect me to start uh, getting this installed next week because I need to do some other things. In fact the first thing I'll be doing is removing the rack and pinion drive and putting it back on the existing machine because I have other things I need to get done at the moment. But I will be forging ahead with it and uh, we will get this attached to the machine as soon as we can. Now one of the other things I need to do before I can install this here is I need to replace these top V-rails here and the problem is when I built these I didn't bring them right to the end at either end and because these V-bearings here are further apart than they were than they are on the existing one uh, I don't have the same amount of travel anymore so I need to make these longer so I can get more travel out of it and I will show you how to make V-rails using a drill press my poor long-suffering drill press it's going to be a lot of fun. The other thing is I'm still struggling with some important engineering questions like um, what colour should I actually paint it? Should I leave it grey or change the colour to something else? Well that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys later. Cheers.